Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Grow the Good podcast. I am just so grateful for the time of Helen from Oku. There's quite a few subtopics, but it's all about sustainability and sustainability in businesses, highlighting the beautiful natural resources we have in Aotearoa, New Zealand, how we can learn more and appreciate this beautiful resource that we have so that we can naturally want to protect these after be more connected with nature and maybe start to think a little bit more consciously about how we can do our part for the planet in this age of climate change and all that but without further ado thank you so much Helen for your time I'm really grateful and I'll pass it on to Helen kia ora everybody Ko rangi uri te maunga, ko kaitina te awa, ko tapuika te iwi, ko te arua te waka, ko nga te moku te hapu, ko moku te marae, ko Helen Paul Smith tōku ingoa, ko te ahumi oro te whanau, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Greetings everybody, that is my pepiha, I am part Māori and my whanau come from the Bay of Plenty and the tribe I belong to, or the iwi I belong to, is Tapuika, and my tribe is Ngāti Moko. I am the co-founder of Orku New Zealand. We are a company that makes a range of New Zealand native herbal products. I co-founded this business with my husband, Scott Smith. We're both herbalists, and he had a real passion for the native plants of Aotearoa New Zealand. And at the time when we created Orku, which was about 15 years ago now, there wasn't a lot being done in that space. So we were using plant medicine from all over the world, but there wasn't much that was being used here from Aotearoa, New Zealand. And we knew that the plant properties that grow here are really special and really potent. Some of you may have heard of Manuka honey, and manuka honey is amazing because it comes from the manuka tree and manuka is just one of the incredible incredible plants that grow here in Aotearoa. So Helen and her husband are herbalists. For those who want a description of a day in the life of a herbalist how would you describe what a herbalist does? At the beginning, uh, Scott and I did training for three years full-time at Well Park College of Natural Therapies in Auckland, where we learned all about the body, health, natural health, and different forms of natural plant medicine. In the daily life of a herbalist, you've got different herbalists that actually grow the plants and supply the material to practitioners and then you've got practitioners who will see clients who might come to them with some kind of physical ailment or mental emotional type ailment and the herbalist will prescribe them some herbs to take to help with their issues also yeah. prescribe diet and lifestyle changes that is amazing I have a question it's making me think because I feel like in this day and age where there's a lot of over-the-counter pills like prescription medicine sometimes it's convenient and fast how would you encourage people to want to learn more about going for herbalist approaches or maybe before they go to chemist or something maybe there's a natural alternative where does your passion come from for that good thing about um using herbs as medicine is they don't have side effects like right. pharmaceutical drugs right and they help the body to balance itself they're not kind of forcing the body into doing something that's not natural for it right. and so you don't get the side effects but you also get a type of self-healing that happens and it doesn't just treat the symptoms herbal medicine can actually get to the root cause of what the issues are mm. and it is true herbal medicine does take a lot longer to work and most of the time not always but most of the time but the results are a lot longer as well 
Wow, this is so fascinating. Helen gave me a cup of a really beautiful tea, and I just feel like, oh, I'm starting to feel healthy already <laughs> because it can be easy these days in a busy schedule. You know, health goes out the window, I guess. But just as a side note. What was the tea that you gave me, Helen, out of your beautiful collection here? <laughs> so, Alfie, I gave you the uh, relax tea or, mm-hmm. or whakata in Māori, and it's made with three New Zealand natives, kanuka, tataramoa, and kawakawa, and then we've blended it with some relaxing type Western herbs as well. Wow. You can only get those plants in New Zealand, Aotearoa New Zealand, so unique to this country, and they grow wild in the bush but our ones we have regenerated our land here and planted a whole lot of these plants here what you were saying before this actually didn't start as like a tea or sort of product business it started from wanting to regenerate the land is that right it was all part of it and we say that the Plants that heal the land also heal the people. So you get certain plants that come up first when um, the land's been cleared and when it's naturally regenerating itself. And a lot of those plants are our really good rungoa plants. And I'll just bring it back to manuka again, which Mm. people universally are familiar with. Mm. So manuka is one of the first ground covers that come up after there's been clearing of the land. Um, It helps to fix nitrogen. And the incredible thing about manuka is it grows in these all these different kinds of conditions. So it can grow rotorua around by hot thermal water, oh, steaming yes. mud, and then it can grow near the top of the mountains in alpine conditions. It grows from the top of the North Island all the way down to the bottom of the South Island. Wow. And it's just the most like, very versatile, it's wow. an incredibly versatile plant. <laughs> that is amazing. Is it Manuka? Yeah, Manuka. Manuka. Yeah. Manuka, thank you. Manuka honey is like a huge popular thing, an exported thing of New Zealand. What are the qualities, the healing qualities of Manuka? Pre-European, yeah. Māori used manuka, and it was just the plant because we didn't have a lot of bees here. We have like one native bee, and it doesn't produce a lot of honey. So oh, okay. the plant was used for its medicinal properties, right. not the honey. And it's the same properties that the honey has that is yeah. in the plant. So it's highly antimicrobial, amazing antiseptic type plant it also has antifungal properties yeah. and anti-inflammatory properties but it's mostly known for its antimicrobial properties wow. and it can kill off different strains of bacteria that even pharmaceutical drugs can't, God, can't that do. is amazing wow so when you were talking before that as a herbalist people can come to you with different ailments and things are there more common ailments that people come to you for the flu or there's such a wide variety people will go and see a herbalist for all sorts of things yeah and the main things that a herbalist will work on initially is correcting the digestive system so making sure a person is digesting their food and assimilating the nutrients from their food properly and getting all the nutrients that they need in their diet so that their body is getting the right fuel that it needs in order to function so it's all about stimulating the body to be in its best condition to heal itself and then there's specific herbs that you can use for specific issues like we're drinking the relaxed tea yeah so i feel herbs. relaxed <laughs> <laughs> there's different herbs in there that have pushed people who are who are suffering from stress anxieties worry insomnia wow uh, all those sorts of things and the list just goes on and on about all the different ailments that you can have and all the different herbs that you can use in combination to treat those ailments so for example for those who are stressed or and stress and anxiety which one would you recommend of these teas? So definitely the Relax Fun Pakata that we're drinking now. Yeah. That's really good. Manuka also has some relaxing properties to it as well. So we've got the Manuka tea that you could also incorporate. And Kawakawa. So we've got yeah. pure Kawakawa that has some natural dopamine in that plant. Really? Right now I'm staring at probably 
uh, 12 different really pretty packaged teas and they all have New Zealand icons. Yes. I would love the artwork, first of all, and there's different tea for different moods, the variety, and for those of you who I guess are very uh, passionate tea lovers, they're not the usual tea flavors. If you go to London, oh, I feel like a lemon and ginger or green tea. But if you're wanting to find something that's, you know, a little bit more unique, but also from the land that we live in, then this is such a beautiful brand because there's so much variety. For example, if I pick up this one, oh yeah, this is, oh, Energize. Mm. And I read the back and it's got licorice, ginger, NZ Kawakawa. It's amazing. Just as a side note, di digestive health, I read recently, is very connected to mental health. Yes. And I know that, for example, IBS, sometimes a confusing condition. The doctors might tell me to get like a, uh, what is it, like a low FODMAP diet or eat certain foods and things like that. There's all sorts of advice. Through being a herbalist, what herbs would you suggest would be best for healing the gut? Because I feel like with the food we eat these days, we're like, I never, you know, processed and stuff. Yeah. So overlooked, you know, you just expect the gut to just work all the time and until it goes wrong, then it bends or I suddenly pay attention to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So quite often we'd recommend like an elimination diet as well. So diet's also part of the treatment just to work out what kind of foods might trigger that off. Right. And also IBS is obviously triggered by stressful situations oh, as well. So you've right. got to have ways of managing your stress levels, working out which foods are going to aggravate your digestive system, mm -hmm. and then taking herbs that help your digestive system just to help inflammation that goes on in the body as well. Yeah, there's a lot of inflammation that goes on through the digestive tract. Yeah, so we've got our digest tea and New Zealand plant that we use in that. We have kawa kawa, which is mm. good for digestion, and another plant called hohiri, which is similar to the Western herb slippery elm. And it just helps to really soothe and calm the digestive tract, and it kind of puts a nice coating as well on your digestive tract. So it sort of helps to pacify everything as well. Wow. Mm. That is amazing. I'm learning so much. So I have a few questions here. From what I'm gathering, there's just so much more to Oku than, you know, just being nice teas made from New Zealand plants. For example, when I had a quick look on your website, usually when you see sustainable packaging on your website, it even has the different certifications of the packaging and it's very in-depth how you're being sustainable. On this podcast, it's interviewing, getting to know the local businesses, how they are actually being sustainable and why is sustainability important to them more than just a tick-the-box kind of thing. And I really see that in, in your brand. Why are you passionate about sustainability and what are the things you're doing in your business that... Uh, really a nod to sustainability so I guess for me personally and my yeah. husband Scott's got his own story but for me right. personally <laughs> I was brought up in the central plateau so that's around the um, central mountains of Aotearoa New Zealand wow. and my house faced three mountains to the front and then behind us was just all native forest and I grew up learning to swim in beautiful mountain creeks. Oh my creeks. gosh, really? And my mum used to throw in lollies and we used to go and find them, you know, with our mouths. Wow. That's how beautiful and clean the environment was that I grew up in. Beautiful, right. clean, fresh air. Central Plateau. Never yeah, National Park Village. Beautiful, right. clean air, beautiful, clean water nature all around us it's really um low population there the, mm -hmm. the nearest town was good 40 minutes away and it was a small town and the nearest yeah. city would have been like two hours drive wow and so i grew up in that beautiful clean pristine 
place. Mm-hmm. And then when I got a little bit older, we moved to the Waikato, yeah. which is a lot more populated and it's a real farming district, which is where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> and and as a kid, I was, I was kind of a little bit horrified because I was like, mm-hmm. where's all the bush gone? Oh. And the, the rivers weren't clean, like the rivers we had back home, or back where I was brought yeah. up. So I was always passionate about looking after the land and having lots of native plants around me and clean waterways, because that's mm. just how I was brought up. And so getting into herbalism and then finding this business, amazing. we have, because I'm part Māori, we mm. have always adopted a what we call a kopapa Māori or a ma tauranga Māori way of doing things in our business. And in our traditional Māori culture, it's all about caring for Papa Tuanuku, and she's our earth mother. Yeah. And we are the kaitiaki, which are the guardians yes. of her and her plants and the animals that live in the bush as well. It's beautiful. And that's, that's the essence of what Oku is and who we are. The most important thing to us is our plants and caring for them and st- uh, planting more native plants wherever we can. Mm. And when we harvest from them, we do it with a lot of love and care and harvest sustainably so that we can go back for the next harvest and there'll be more there for us to take. We're mm. always grateful for what we take from Papa Tuanuku. And what we want to achieve for our business is to give back more to the land than what we take. And it's quite, it. it's quite quite so hard beautiful. as a business because really? there's um there's just so many you know you've got all your packaging waste which is yeah. why we've made ours as compostable and recyclable. Mm, they're really cute, <laughs> yes. light and cute. Yeah, the herbal waste that we have from making yeah. our products goes back into the land and compost. Amazing. And yeah, it's a journey that we're on, a hikoi in Māori. It's a journey, mm. a sustainability journey, and we're always trying to improve and do things better and work within our wider community as well. And how can we work as a community to make our environmental practices better? I love that. That's just amazing. That's like being a leader in business for sustainability because it's not just... When you talk to a few businesses, you can start to tell whether it's just a tick the box or if it, you know, it's coming from a place of genuine care for the future. For me, to be honest, before this journey of learning about how can we be sustainable in tourism and then that looks into different businesses, I wasn't really super conscious about the individual actions I could take. And it shows how much power that at an individual level we can really make a difference and does add up. And so I really resonate with how you shared that as a community, how can we, you know, drive this movement of sustainability? Businesses are a huge part of that. So it's amazing to know that there's a business that really cares (laughs) about making a difference. Wow. So you, the herbal waste goes back as compost. I heard that clippings of harakeke plant any that isn't used goes back to the land or mm-hmm. just part of uh, composting as well yeah. and also when you take from the harakeke you take the older grandparents so and then you've got That's the amazing. parents yeah. and then the, the mukos in the middle the grandchildren in the middle so you only take those old I ones love as that. well yeah. like that was so fascinating for me to learn because it's like before all the science and everything be traditional or indigenous culture now it would be harvesting the outside to like preserve the growth cycle but it's amazing that in maori culture you harvest the is it the grandparents you said yeah like the that fox, yeah the harakeke, yes and it still sort of ties back into gardening concepts of today or something yeah. but it's already what people and, and cultural practices were already doing before all the theory and all that, which is just exactly. fascinating. Exactly, because our ancestors or our tipuna, they understood the importance of looking after the planet and we're, you know, our civilization is starting to wake up to it now that yeah. they are getting the climate change and yeah. <laughs> everybody's getting affected by it. Everyone's yeah. going, oh my God, you know. We need to do this. But our ancestors knew from forever that this is what we have to do. Like we have to respect the earth and and, um, each other as well. Mm. That 
is amazing and i've never heard of was it national park village that sounds like the dream to have grown up in it can be quite cold it's <laughs> <laughs> amazing like is that because that one week, this whole tourism journey started with a one week trip down south and that was just beautiful, just driving down roads with mountains like, quite near and then there was a lake and there's got the mountains and we did a dip in the lake so yeah, it was freezing. <laughs> what I sort of reflected on with, when you were talking about that was how the more we spend time in nature, the more connected we are and then naturally that grows that care as well and appreciation got me really excited because you were talking about this next project yeah I'll let you share it almost like a full circle with your brand well, I had some interest from some tourists yeah oh. um, and wanting to come here yeah. and do a walk through our Rungoa garden or our New Zealand our regenerated native garden and yeah. learning about plants here so having a look and a feel and a, mm -hmm. and a taste mm -hmm. and a smell so experiencing them in their natural environment and experiencing them through your five senses and learning a little bit about the traditional Māori use and how they've been used for centuries mm -hmm. for their healing properties mm -hmm. yeah and having a walk through and then just finishing that off with a a nice cup of tea afterwards one of our herbal teas or people could possibly make their own and make up their own herbal tea blend they get back in the minibus and carry on to their next destination that is so exciting everyone have you heard that <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> wow it sounds really engaging the last comparison point would be when I did this eco trail with my friend and there were those signs like this, this tree and it's, it's this tall and that sort of information but it, that would be so exciting to do all the senses and taste at the end and explaining how the healing properties and everything. So it would be so educational and fun. The other thing about herbal medicine is that if you spend a lot of time with um, the plants and observe spend a lot of time observing them this is what our ancestors did mm -hmm. you can they can teach you what they're good for you can like understand the conditions that they grow in like we've got a plant called horopito and mm -hmm. it's highly antifungal it's an incredible incredible antifungal herb and it usually grows in really damp places and it has sometimes this type of fungus that grows or like a yeah, type of fungus kind of mold that mm. grows on it in a lot of these damp places. Yeah. And so it's showing you it can grow and sustain itself in these places. And so that's the properties that that plant produces, really highly antifungal properties. If you want to learn, a really amazing way to, to, to learn about the plants is to grow them yourselves and to nurture them, to observe them in all different ways and then just see what do you think they're trying to say to you we have a thing that's in herbal amazing. medicine called the doctrine of signatures and wow. that's when a plant looks like what it's good for so the walnut the outside the shell is like the skull and the yeah. inside's like the human brain oh, yes. and the oil in the walnuts are really good for your central nervous system and your brain and same with like a tomato if you cut that in half it's yeah. like the chambers of the heart and it's the lycopene that's really good for your yeah. heart as well what was that called again sorry? um the doctrine of signatures doctrine of signatures and wow. our um, ancestors or our tipuna they knew to look for plants and what to look for in plants that would show them what these different plants were good for yeah. they were also signs for different things so for example we've got um, a plant out here called kumara ho yeah. and when that plant goes into flower kumara ho that is the sign for when you should plant your kumara get your kumara ready to be oh, really? um, sown into the ground and there's all sorts of different signs in nature that are ancestors understood and could read the signs yeah read the signs of what mm. what the plants were saying to them if you are really good with animals yeah you can understand their language and yeah. plants have a language as well walking into and in here and your aura is very calm and i'm just thinking about like my mom who's a plant person there's sort of this different connection I just know when they talk about the plants and things like that that they have and it's just when i was living with my family and their home my brother and i had a routine with the garden and the compost and at that time we spent in the garden 
it's very can't describe but quite healing and peaceful Mm -hmm. yeah you're just even just feeling the soil Mm -hmm. yeah there was this other podcast i was listening to and they said our bodies need uh, magnetism grounding Mm -hmm. where we just stand out in the sun and feet on the ground and just feeling grounded in the earth 10 minutes a day or something like that (laughs) yeah i feel like now such a great time to be encouraging or bringing to light anything to do with promoting being out in nature more Mm. yeah especially you know we're all on social media for some reason and some more than others but the other reason why I was really getting into sustainability other than this was I was thinking about the day I might have kids in the future and I was thinking what sort of environment would I want them to grow up in I'd exactly. still want a healthy land. Like, I wouldn't want them going to school and there's, like, no grass or something, like, no healthy grass run barefoot on or something. And so, yeah, I was really drawn to a brand when I saw it. Our ancestors were always thinking of the future generations as well. That's so uh, nice. And they, they would have whakatokis or sayings. Yes, oh, my gosh, I and love the, those. <laughs> and the sayings were just so wise. Um, and they get handed down from generation to generation and they're just like wise words from your elders that help you navigate your way through life Mm -hmm. this on sunday i went to the living maori village like i was saying and one of the tour guides i asked them because they were imparting all this is it matauranga Mm -hmm. maori knowledge cultural knowledge and i said what makes them really passionate about it and she just said one sentence she said uh, all I think about is what ancestor would I want to be known as? That's what she shared. And I was like, wow. She said, all these are like from our ancestors, this knowledge. And like, when I pass away, what did I give to like people? Exactly. And I was like, that is amazing. Yeah. So it just helps more consciousness. And it's if our ancestors thought about our future, future generations and we should be as well kind yeah, of thing. Because like, we're the next ancestors. Yeah. So we need to be... And look at the mess that we've left. Now is the time, like, encouraging sustainable businesses because businesses, like you say, produce a lot of waste. Yeah. Packaging, like you say. What would you say would be the key, although we have touched on, you know, like, a connection to nature and and all that, the key to encouraging sustainability in businesses or there's, like, challenges with it too. Just encouraging that, that it's a mindset really yeah yeah and we have some groups as well there's some yeah. groups that you can belong to and get on a zoom calls together oh, and, nice. <laughs> and totoko or support each other in, in in each other's journey so just you know that you're not alone do all this work on your own and trying to figure out okay which is the best um compostable bag and where do we get this from and you know how do we source this kind of material right. and What's the latest thing? Because the technology is always changing and we don't have the best technology here in New Zealand. We constantly have to be educating ourselves and updating like what's the best products to be using in our packaging. So it's really encouraging to be part of a group of people that share their knowledge like that. That's amazing. And And there's also like um, whole communities in New Zealand, like for example, Raglan, Mm -hmm. where like their, their whole community is about sharing the sustainability journey um and there's so many businesses even their waste management is just first class really i've been told to interview someone from there yeah Yeah. and how (laughs) they manage all the waste that comes in because it's a it's a really popular tourist destination it's an absolutely incredibly beautiful part of new zealand west coast beach Mm. and how do they maintain all these visitors that come into their community bringing all their rubbish and one of the things that they do a lot of the uh, people that make coffee and the best coffee comes from raglan by the way (laughs) they they won't serve you a coffee and like this is staunch business practice they won't serve you a coffee unless you have your own reusable cup do not use cups that um, are throwaway cups even though if they are compostable they just don't use them because they end up all over the beach mm. so yeah there's there's a lot of the uh, one of the best coffee places there no you don't get served you don't have a cup <laughs> that is um, amazing so that's like leadership 
from a business. It's a real staunch thing because you're turning away business. You're turning away yeah. money. Have Should good just, coffee. <laughs> I have really good coffee. I had one. It was just okay. out of this world. Okay. <laughs> Only someone who can, who's got the best coffee can like turn away like, customers. Eh? Right. Um, okay. But the, yeah, they've got some really staunch practices and they all work together. They even have like a tool hire shed that all their tools are run on batteries. So instead yeah. of like all these people having line trimmers, for example, that yeah. hardly ever get used, you can just go and hire the battery one at the, it's like a council um, building or something, the tool right. library. Um, instead really of all this good. waste going yeah. into all these people having lawn mowers and garden equipment, you just have a central place where you can all just share the same tools. Yeah. And they're battery operated. They do so many amazing things. There's the waste management, zero waste, I think it's called. Yeah. They do incredible recycling. Yeah. The whole community, they educate the, the school kids on how to recycle. Education, yeah. Um, so it takes the community yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, and exactly. They're a really amazing example. Good leadership. That is, wow, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing that for everyone. And even how you're sharing your time on this podcast to raise awareness. And it's just, it's really great. It really takes the community. Yeah, wow. we actually... You can only do so much on your own, your own yeah, little that's bubble. Yeah, so true. Because you're all, like, part of a network. Mm. And then the whole network, the whole ecosystem has to be doing it together because you can mm. only get so far on your own. The yeah. challenge, I feel like, is if, if you're trying to inspire or uh, lead change, being like, one of the f- few, coffee shop isn't the norm for businesses. So, like, they had to make that decision to lead the way there and then eventually hopefully other businesses might follow yeah Yeah. and we're trying to get to the next level so it's like compostable or recyclable but even next level is reuse so like our cough and chest um, medicine and our healing balms are in glass jars (laughs) having them go to the recycling plant and using all that energy that it takes to break them down and recycle them The best thing that you can do is have shops that where you can go and get them refilled. Right. So you just clean out your bottles. Or you have, mm. like, companies where we all can use the same kind of glass jars. Yeah. And people can just return them to a central place and you just get back what's been returned. Oh. So that's kind of, well, that's kind of like where we're wanting to move to in the future. Right. So it's a hikoi. It's a journey where you're always trying to do things better and better and better. And we haven't got it perfect yet, but we're and we're all working together, groups of us mm. in our pods, um, <laughs> to just keep going and to just improve things all the time as much as we can. Would you say, like, from a business perspective, is it more expensive to be sustainable? I'm just trying to think what would make a business not try and be sustainable yeah it it is yeah. like you can pro- you could buy these glass mm. in the plastic for a lot cheaper this is fsc our cardboard tubes that we put our teas into mm. are fsc which means they come from sustainable sources mm. whereas you know if you weren't using that it would be a lot cheaper i think they're half the price right. if they're non-fsc the compostable bags cost more than just an everyday plastic bag so mm. yeah it does it's really like it's going the extra the more businesses take it on then yeah. we've got the economy of scale working right. then it'll bring the price of everything down right. as well yeah oh, especially with living costs these days <laughs> this question is what would you say to encourage those with a vision or a project or sort of an entrepreneurial idea to pursue that like how this went from an idea to reality and it's won many awards. <laughs> yeah. What would be my advice for yeah. someone who's starting out? My advice would be to, you've got to just work really, really hard. Mm. It's hard work <laughs> and it's perseverance. And when you get knocked back, you've got to be able to get back up again. Mm. Um, don't expect to be a millionaire overnight. <laughs> you've got to like, handle the rough times you know there's economic challenges right Mm, now that are are occurring so when you're in business you're going to have ups and downs you've got to be able to weather the storm Mm. and it's just yeah do what you love and Mm. 
you just can't give up mm. if you want to succeed. Or sometimes Love that's it. not true. Sometimes it can take you on a different path that you didn't know about. There's like a bigger picture in the background that you don't know about, that you mm. maybe followed this path over here and it didn't work out, but it actually ended up bringing you onto another path, another path. that did that's work amazing. out. Wow. Yeah. Oh, but I would just you. encourage people to go for it because you learn so much working for yourself. You grow so much. You meet incredible other business-minded people who are driven and focused. Mm. And, yeah, there's just so much to gain from wow. creating your own business. That is amazing. There we go, guys. Before we go on to, I guess, where people can follow you and then things like that, just for those who are really curious, what are your top sellers? So um, <laughs> our biggest, our biggest. So we've got three yeah. parts to the range. We've got our okay. New Zealand native herbal teas. Right. We've got our wellness tonics or our cough and chest elixirs and immunity elixirs, they're called. Wow. And then we've got our skincare, which is our kawakawa balms and soap. So Ooh. we've got one kawakawa balm that's really for eczema and itchy inflamed sore skin. And the other one is kawakawa and arnica balm, which is for aches and pains and strains and arthritis. Wow. It deals with the inflammation. So and our, the biggest range out of the three is the tea. The tea is definitely our <laughs> most popular product. Right, <laughs> yeah. And silently in the background, we sell a lot of Kawakawa Healing Balm. Right. And our sales for that just continue to grow quietly. We don't really mm. advertise it much. It just kind of happens organically. Okay. Our Kawakawa Healing Balm. Right. Our popular tea used to always be just pure Kawakawa. And for those of you right. who don't know, Kawakawa is an amazing anti-inflammatory New Zealand native herb. And it's just so good for so many things it's like one of the main rungoa or main uh, plant medicine that maori used it's just mm. incredibly versatile so people in new zealand know about kawakawa mm. and that was always our most popular tea was our 100 percent kawakawa tea mm. but our manuka teas sells really well with our internationals and overseas because people are mm. obviously aware of manuka honey yeah yeah what does kawakawa taste like those who are curious. Yeah, so kawakawa <laughs> kind of tastes a little bit pepperminty. Okay. A little bit menthol, a little bit like menthol, it's and a little bit, nice. tiny little bit peppery, peppery without too much heat. But it's kind of got that peppery sort of tingle to it. Okay. Wow. And it goes, so it goes really well with like, um, in our digest, we blend it with ginger and peppermint because it's kind of lends itself to those sorts of flavors anyway it would be quite fun taste testing or experimenting with your different blends so yeah, <laughs> yeah he is the he formulates everything wow um and he loves playing around with his herbs yeah. and that would be you know if that's what he could do all day that's what he would do he would just like, <laughs> create products and taste things and wow. blend things and yeah, mix different herbs together. I'm just curious, with like perfumes, when you smell different ones, you then smell coffee beans to offset, so like you have a fresh nose to start smelling the next one. Is there something like that for after tasting different teas? Well, like, we don't have any food, like, yeah. like to end, we try and have a clear place palette yeah. no food around the tea tasting times and then yeah. we may have some water between and then we may okay. try like if we're doing like a range of teas yeah. we may try them in, at another time in a different order like you know once you've had one by the time you get to the third one you've still got build up from the other like two yeah. for example change around the order that we'll do the tastings in and yeah try them on different people because everyone's yeah. got different tastes about what Tasting. they like to yeah to finish off i guess where people can follow you if you have any new exciting flavors coming up so like um yes they can follow us uh, at orku.co.nz so that will take you to our website mm -hmm. instagram is orku underscore nz and then facebook is orku dash nz native herbal products Weird. and then we're stocked in some really awesome places in yeah, new stocks. zealand yeah yeah so like the retail store at whakawera Wera, where you visited in the weekend yes, and that. most tourist outlets you can find us yeah that health shops 
gift shops, some cafes, some pharmacies. Oh, nice. yeah. How do you choose your dock places? That's great that it's so varied. Yes. Like the more widespread, it's also like a representation of sustainability too. So it's really just where they sell mostly. So right. we, we started in health shops. That was the right. first place because these are all really therapeutic products. Mm. And then our biggest sellers started to come from our tourist market. Tourist. Because, especially with the teas, they're a beautiful packaged piece yeah, of New Zealand. Yeah, they're so pretty. I can't find anything like it anywhere else in the world. They stand yeah. out and they're lightweight, so they don't t and they don't take up a lot of weight or space in your luggage. They're perfect. They look perfect for gifts. Like yeah, <laughs> such beautiful gifts. So Very. Um, the tourists started to catch on to, oh, yeah. look at this, I want to take some home yeah. and give them away as gifts. And then okay. like pharmacies, obviously, for their therapeutic. Yeah. Especially our cough and chest medicine, our oh, herbal right. cough and chest elixirs and our healing balms. Yeah. They sell really well in pharmacy too. Oh, and yeah, our next products, I'm sort of, we've got one soap at the moment that's yeah. got native ingredients in it. So I'm working on doing a set of three, three mm. different flavours and they'll all use New Zealand native plants. That is so exciting. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much, Helen. I learned so much and I Lovely. hope we did too. <laughs> For those of you who are listening, I hope we learned something new and a bit of inspiration to uh, find our own journey sustainability or getting out in nature and reconnecting with nature and or just the things that bring us peace and healing a little bit more consciousness I do care for our future generations as well and if we're in business or an aspiring entrepreneur to be a leader in the space that we wish to pursue, to plant a seed, is to believe in the future, <laughs> to believe in tomorrow. And um, I just hope we took something from here. But yeah, thank you so much again, Helen. And thank we know you. where to follow. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I hope you have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you, Bye bye, everyone. Bye. So if you'd like some more positive in our lives, join me in this podcast journey. Subscribe. And I'm always open to new topics and suggestions. Let's keep it moving and grow more of the good things. Thank you so much.